a complete tour of Academic City University College. We will see everything from their lecture halls, students who still clinic computer lab and so much more experience funny moments in the interview <laughs> in addition to the answer to these questions what are the fees? Can we afford it? So if I'm a student and I have B7, E8, F9, doesn't mean I can't be in that position. Let's get started. I'm here with Lorna. I want to learn a little bit about Academic City. So please, Lorna, can you tell us something small about Academic City? Right. Um, so once upon a time, somewhere in 2009, um, Academic City was established. But it wasn't the academic city we know now. It started from somewhere and we went through phases of rebranding and here we are today. Um, we've been on this new campus since 2018 and if I should say, we've been chopping some amazing saxes that I'm sure somewhere along the interview I will be talking about. But yeah, we identified some of the loopholes in our education system where we needed students to have more of the practicality to the theory they study. It wasn't just supposed to be about the ultra modern tools and logistics they see in the textbooks. They needed to touch, feel, and experiment with these machines because one thing I keep saying, when they go on the job market, they don't go there to talk theory. They have to act practical. What do you bring on board? Is a question I think every employer will be asking his or her employee. So here we are today. Okay, so what you are saying is true. I actually took a look at some of your classrooms mm -hmm. and we saw the engineering departments right. and you have quite a number of equipment. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure the practical aspect is going through. So since then, would you say there are some prominent alumni you can talk about? Quite a number of them I'll talk about. Now, we have a number of them starting up their own companies, which is a thing of pride and delight because one of the things we constantly push out there is for students to be job creators and on job searches after their four year stay in here. And so to see some of them getting contracts to manufacture or produce smart bicycles, to see some of them being farmland owners with incubators hashing eggs, I know we are definitely going somewhere. It's, it's a thing of pride and delight, if, if I should say. Yes, that's very impressive. Mm -hmm. You're one of the leading universities when it comes to STEM, that science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So what are some of the achievements you've had so far? So first achievement I'll talk about. We were ranked the um, second overall best university in Ghana, and then the 15th in Sub-Sahara Africa which is um, something that we recently had to celebrate because, I mean, we, we are pretty new. We've been on the block for just about five years talking about the new academic city. So for us to clock that, it's, it's something worth celebrating here. <laughs> Another burning question on the mind of students is, what are some of the courses you offer? We understand it's an engineering university, mm -hmm. but specifically, what courses do you offer? Right. Um, I would say we are STEM biased. But we are not solely an engineering university. So we have three faculties on campus. We have the engineering faculty, we have the computational science, and then we have the business administration and communication arts faculty. Now under the communication arts, you would find programs like journalism and mass communication, advertising and public relations. When you go for the business administration, you would see programs like marketing, human resource management, accounting, banking and finance, as well as entrepreneurship. And then when we look at the computational science or informatics, you will see programs like artificial intelligence, which by the way, we are the only university in Sub-Saharan Africa to introduce that as a full-fledged undergrad program, right? <laughs> and also you will see information technology as well as computer science. Then when we get to the almighty engineering faculty, 
which I'm sure most of you are curious about, um, you would see programs like computer engineering, um, electronics and communication engineering, electrical and electronics engineering, mechanical engineering, industrial and systems engineering, you have biomedical engineering, as well as robotics engineering. Again, the only university in Sub-Saharan Africa to introduce it. Right. If they want to read any of these programs, what is the requirement? Because you know, for most of the universities, they have cut off points. Yep. Uh -huh. So, what are your cut off points? Right. Um, left to us, I think we had a conversation before this. Um, I know we could make beasts, amazing people out of everybody, right? But then again, we have a governing body and regulators that we have to work with. And so, if you're looking at um, WASI, applicant or WASI student for example, of course there is a cutoff point which is a C6. We need three of your electives, three of your core subjects. We know what the core subjects are, right? <laughs> and so yeah, the core subjects, we look at English, Math, Science, and then the elective subjects, we look at elective math, elective physics, and then um, choose between chemistry or biology, depending on the one that we did very well in. But if you're looking at specifically biomedical engineering, you're looking at the English, math, science, um, elective math, elective physics, and elective biology. That is pretty straightforward. And then for any of the other non-engineering programs, the elective, um, elective math is not so important. So we look at the English, math, science, or social studies. We substitute between um, any of those two, but English and math is very compulsory. And then uh, we can look at your best three electives for you to go with. If you are an A-level applicant, um, we look at your IGCSC or O-level. That is what we give you an offer um, on conditions that you meet the requirements for your A-level, right? And so you apply with your IGCSE or O-level. We are looking at a minimum of five passes. And then with the A level as well, um, I mean, we know what good grades are, so coming with the good grades and we can proceed with it. And we take IB students as well, we take um, American diploma, Canadian diploma, French baccalaureate. We take all of these results. The most important thing is coming with the good grades and you will definitely get the admission you're looking for. Yes, yeah, so you mentioned good grades. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a student and I have D7, E8, F9, doesn't mean I can't gain admission. Unfortunately not. Like I said, we know what the good grades are. <laughs> D, E, F, <laughs> obviously, those are not good grades and so we, we won't be able to give you offer based on those grades, obviously. Looking at it as an international university, what are the fees? Can we afford it? So I would say our fees are affordable, but they are not cheap. Okay. Right? Fees are very affordable, but they are not cheap. Um, and so our fee ranges from 2,500 USD. Not CDs. No, not CDs. <laughs> okay. Not CDs. Um, 2,500 USD to um, 5,000 USD. Um, it doesn't mean you compulsory have to pay in USD. You can convert in CD and then pay as well. Okay, that is an option. But that is for the Ghanaian students. And then for the international students, the fee ranges from 3,000 USD to 6,000 USD if, if you want to pay. Okay, so if I'm understanding this correctly, it means 3,500 USD is currently about 28,375 Ghana cities. Fair to about 56,750 yeah. and that's affordable. That is very much affordable. So let me tell you why it is affordable. This fee you pay covers for your registration, right? It covers for the tuition fee, it covers the textbooks and learning materials you'll be using in class. We are currently in the library, right? We have an e-library and then the normal library setting. They have a software library that students can use both on and off campus. You equally have access to use the labs, I think you've seen our labs, very amazing labs. You have access to use these labs for your projects, um, works as well. You also have access to the best Wi-Fi, if I should say, ever to exist in Ghana. <laughs> right, and that's just me bragging, forgive me. Um, so all of these are embedded in the field that you're paying. Again, we don't impose for 
parents or applicants to pay everything up front. Um, we have installment payment plan or models for parents to go by. And so you have access to paying bits if you can afford to pay everything up front. So Tell me if that's not worth it. So what's the payment plan? You said you can pay in bits. Yes. So in how many bits? Um, so we have three payments plan for every semester. For viewers, I mean, the fees you mentioned are for the year. Yes, the fee I mentioned for the academic year, but we have two semesters in every academic year. We've seen the hostel facilities. The hostel facilities are very beautiful. We've seen the one in the room, the two in the room, and students would want to know how much you charge for the hostel facilities as well. Right. So with the hostels for the government students, um, it ranges between 750 USD down to 2,000 USD. And then for the international student, it ranges between um, 1,650 USD to um, 4,600 USD. That's also for the year. That's also for the year. Another very interesting question is scholarships. Mm -hmm. You know, in Ghana, a lot of us are, should I say, poor? And so, yes, we would like. We are poor. rich. <laughs> <laughs> poor but brilliant students, yeah. you see. So, we have scholarships. Um, yes, we do have scholarships available for students and the scholarships are purely merit-based. Um, although we say merit-based, we don't just look at your academics, we also look at um, things like do you have any leadership role, or have you ever played any leadership role, have you done community service, do you have any extracurricular activities that you do, because we are looking at an all-rounded um, grant of presidential scholarship and not just the academics. So yes, we do have it and that is the requirement for it if, if you are looking at applying. Your grade should be the best of the best. So if you are looking at WASI, we know A is the overall. If you are looking at um, A level, we know A star is the overall. If you are looking at IB, we know 7 is the overall. So yes, these are um, um, offers available for applicants who are interested in applying for the presidential scholarship. Okay, which means it's very competitive. Extremely competitive. So the better your grades, the better your chances of getting the scholarship. Exactly. So typically in the year, how many people gain scholarship? Um, that is very um, random. It's, I wouldn't give you a specific number because we don't have a specific it's number. Generally. Okay, so last year, for example, we gave out eight scholarships. Yeah. It's out of the lot, just eight. Yes, out of wow, the lot. It's not just eight. This is a 40,000 USD scholarship. Wow, and it covers what? It covers everything. Absolutely everything from your application to your tuition to accommodation, to being fed three times a day, you're getting monthly allowance, you're getting laptops and other learning materials, you are getting transportation from home to campus and back. I mean, the only thing you literally need is your luggage that you need to drive on campus, basically, <laughs> because being transported from home to this place is all catered for. Yes, yeah, that's very good. So after everything we've heard, if a student wants to apply to the school, how do they get admission forms? Right, so we've completely migrated from the traditional style of applying. Um, and so if you want to apply, you can visit our website um, on www.acity.edu.gh. And that is our website. You can just click on the button where it says apply now and put in your application. If you also want to make further inquiries to be convinced properly that you are doing the right thing, you can always reach out to the contact number 026 26 So at this point, is there anything you'd like to tell prospective students? Um, so this is something I always say, but I'm sure most of you know the mantra of Academic City by now, which is make your mark, right? Um, but these are my final words. If you want a space or an environment to be asked 
where Aish means be innovative, be as creative as you can be, explore the world of possibilities, which stands for the E, and also discover the full potentials you have as an individual, then there is no better place than in academic city. Come, let's make your mark. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to forward it to them and then you get your answer. This is to say that every day is a campus tour day here on campus. So if you want to come in to see the facilities for yourself, I'm sure you captured some places. And oh, uh, one question we get a lot, is this place really in Ghana or is it abroad? <laughs> are we sure it's not photoshopped? Come see it for yourself and our doors are always open to take you on a tour when you come around. Thank you. Okay, thank you. To take a tour of other top schools in Ghana, click on the next video. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.